tell me when. All right, so today at Construction Edge, we've got a special treat for you. There's not very many videos out of the Yanmar SV40, uh, one of the top sellers of the Yanmar fleet of excavators. The reason being is you can get a six-way blade on the front of the 40. Uh, the 40 is the same footprint as your Vio 35 within a, a few inches either way. You're, you're gaining a 1,000 pounds, but you're in the same footprint as the 35. So the guys that are liking the 35s love the extra horsepower, the six-way blade of the new Yanmar 40. Yanmar 40 is going to come with your hydraulic pin grabber standard right here. One of the keys to Yanmar, you do two things with a hydraulic pin grabber. I can take that bucket and I can I can show I can I can scoop just like regular, or I can flip the bucket because all it's doing is grabbing the pins and I can shovel with it as well. So really nice feature to have. I sell a lot of these with a adapter plate to run on a, a skid steer attachments on it. I'm getting 19 gallons of flow on my PTO one. Okay. 10 gallons on my PTO2. PTO2 is typically for my thumb. The PTO1 is going to have adapters for uh, skid steer couplers to run your breakers, run your augers, run any skid steer attachment I can pretty much imagine on this with the exception of weight. Okay? One big plus to it. All cylinders are guarded. Every single one. When you're digging down the hole, this one will do 12 feet. When you're digging down that hole, you don't have to worry about your cylinders getting tapped on the edge of the hole. When you're digging up in the trees or, or lifting up and pulling stuff out of the trees with a thumb, you don't have to worry about your top cylinder getting hammered either. So I've got a lot of extra features on here that are really nice, not just on the SV40, but across the EMR lineup. This is by far our best seller. I sell a lot of EMR SV40s. Open cab, cab, six-way, angle, straight blade, Many different options, okay? If you notice, all of your straight lines are hard lines, okay? If you have to replace a line, I don't want to have to replace an eight-foot line where I can just replace a three-foot line. Saves a lot of money in the long run. Cab on this one, door locks open, handle here to lock it back, to close it back. You're going to have your battery shut off right here. I shut that off, winter time, batteries start going dead. I can shut this thing off, and I can save my battery life, okay? Uh, underneath the seat, I've got all my fuses here and operator's manuals, okay? The armrests on every single Yanmar excavator are going to be adjustable. Every single operator is different. Every single operator is going to be tall, skinny, big, whatever. Uh, they have different arm lengths. So adjustable armrest to be comfortable in the seat is really, really a nice feature. Open and close. Get in, get out. Uh, once this is down, everything's live. Up, everything's off. Okay? No problems. Seat slides forward and backwards. Seat reclines. Okay? We'll go over the more features on the inside here in just a second. Everybody has different control patterns. Backhoe guys, excavator guys. Two different breeds. Everybody, everybody learned on something different. When I open this door, I've got my features here. OPT, backhoe guys. STD, that's going to be your standard for excavator. I can switch it by just pulling a valve over. Either or. And it's right there when I get in the machine. I don't have to go around the other side switch a valve, and then come back around. It's right when I get in the machine right here. Behind that, I'm going to have a standard toolbox used to keep some different tools, grease, whatever. On the track system itself, two 9 bolts, pull that panel off, you got your grease sack right there, ready to go. Okay? On your 35, by 35, you're going to have 27 horsepower. Okay? It's nice to be able to get into a 40 that's in the same footprint, but I jump 12 horsepower. I go to 39 in this one. It's a monster for its size. Okay, Like I told you, 12-foot dig depth, we're going to be able to lift 5,000 pounds right in front of the blade. 
Max reach is going to change a little bit depending on situations. Okay. On the back back here. Come on back around this way. On the back back here, I've got my AC condenser, AC fan, okay, and my windshield washer fluid for the front. Pumps all the way through the cab and up into the front. Solid back window, solid side window on that side. On the other side, I got sliders, okay? We'll show you those when we get into the cab. Uh, every door, whenever it opens up, this is all shock mounts. So when I open it, it's going to pull open and it's going to stay. It's not going to sling back and hit me in the wind, which is really a nice feature. On the back door, when I open it up, this is going to lock down, and it's going to keep it from hitting me. I've got my standard uh, sound guarding here. Keep the thing quiet inside the cab. Uh, 39 horse Yanmar engine, okay? Uh, it is a monster of an engine for this size of machine. Okay, it's going to make you dig faster. It's going to make you drive faster. It's going to make you respond quicker, okay? Yanmar is the best engine known to man. It's I'm, I'm a firm believer in Yanmar engines themselves. Every single... Uh, machine in, in the world is trying to put Yanmar engines in them. There's a reason for that because they just last. They just run and run and run. I've got my side panel here. I can open this up. My side panel comes open. Here I've got battery. Door flips open for my battery. Got a radiator here. Okay. On top, I've got three 9 16 bolts. I can pull the cap off. I get to the top of my radiator. All right here, easy to maintain. Okay, when this shuts, there's just a pin here you lock into place and shut it, and then lock open your back, ready to go. On the side over here, you know, there's two slots here and here. When I come around my machine in the morning, I want to make sure my hydraulic fluid is sitting where it needs to be. My fuel is where it needs to be, okay? There's a fuel gauge inside. There's a hydraulic temperature sensor inside. But I want to be able to look at an actual sight glass and see where my hydraulic fluid level is. If I've got a leak and I don't see any hydraulic fluid in here, I know before I take off for the day. Diesel here, there's a tube with a cork that floats on the diesel. Whenever this thing is full, you'll see that cork up here at the top. Other than that, we're opening this thing up. Locks open. I got my hydraulic and my fuel right here, as far as my fuels, okay? Come around the machine one more time. Same track system as the other side. Uh, go over how to, how to expand those. I've got right here my single way or my dual way uh, hydraulic flow. It's on a three quarter inch bolt right here. It turns a quarter turn. If you notice right here at the top, I've got PTO both ways, or I've got single way for a hammer. Hammers don't run dual flow. They're not going to push fluid in and push fluid back out. It's only a one-way flow for a hammer. So I can switch this to hammer mode right here. You notice there are two grease certs right here. One grease cert is for the back side of this uh, cylinder. The other grease cert is going to be for my swing joint. Okay, I can do both of them at the same time. A lot of people don't know how to actually grease a swing joint, you put four squirts of grease in it, and then you turn it a quarter turn. Another four squirts, quarter turn. Another squirts, four squirts, quarter turn. Until I'm all the way back around, then I do four squirts, and then I circle it. And that takes that grease all the way around that entire swing joint. Okay? That's the best way to, on any machine in the world, excavator-wise, that's the best way to grease them. Now... <clears throat> We're going to go inside and we're going to show you what the hydraulic pin grabber will do. And then we're going to show you what the six-way blade will do. If you notice here on the front, I've got a replaceable cutting edge. As that, as that bottom edge wears out from contouring ground, back filling, whatever I'm going to be doing with it, I just unbolt it and flip it. i got a brand new cutting edge then. Once that other side is gone, pull it off, replace it. I'm not wearing out my blade at the end of the day by running one without a cutting edge on it. It's always got a double edge. Guarding cylinders. It's got coverage for the guards. Okay? 
And from the inside, you'll see here in a second how the lines line up for the six-way to know when you're back to level uh, from inside the cab. So let's come around here and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so on our six-way blade, we've got our blade handle here on the right-hand side. Four buttons on this blade handle and a trigger on the front. Trigger is going to be operating my uh, two-speed on and off. Okay, my top two buttons are going to be my blade angle side to side. So if you notice on the blade, I've got my, my lines down there on the blade and, it, and the top one's twisting so I can see where my blade is lined up. On the bottom two buttons, I'm going to have my angle. So I can, I can cut either, either direction. If I want to cut a ditch or I've got an uneven contour, I can use this to, uh, to adjust my blade. The major benefit of this blade is whenever I am in a situation where I'm digging and I'm, and I'm here digging and my, my machine's teeter-tottering on me. When my machine teeter-totters is because even though my blade is straight and my blade is down and my, my tracks are, are level, then I've got one part of contour on the ground that's not exactly sitting where it needs to be. And as the machine moves, it drops down into that hole. To fix that on this, I can extend one side out and then one side down and push just one side into the ground. Does that make sense? So I can do it the same on the other side. So if I push the other side out, it doesn't really matter how I'm, how I'm angled. Let me move my bucket out of the way so you can see it. Whenever I move this, I can push one side down and just have my blade down in the ground. I can pull back the other way and just put my other side down, which will help me get centered up for whatever I need to do. Whenever I'm done and I'm back filling, I can, I can line this back straight by knowing where my red lines are. Once I get my red lines back straight where they need to be, I know my blade is level for the ground. A lot of things Yanmar, Yanmar owners and other, other competitors owners really don't know is Yanmar has actually got a float feature on their blade. I can push the blade down just a little bit and I can raise the front of my machine to, for stability. If I push the handle all the way down, I go into float mode. Now, if I've got hard contours, my blade will float right across the top of them, which really ease their back filling. The plus to the six way is while I'm in float mode, I still have my angles. I can still do uh, side to side and up and down. So, which is really a nice feature on the Yanmar itself. Now I'm gonna show you out front how the bucket hooks and unhooks. I'm gonna show you right, right, that right here first. There's a, there's a coupler here that I can turn on and I can mount or dismount my deal. Anytime that I push that button, it releases the pressure that I've got held on that uh, coupler and then it will dismount or mount. If you want to go out to the front, I'll show you how it hooks up and, and unhooks on the SV40. As you notice, now it's hooked back on. I've got full pressure and I can start digging again. If I'm switching attachments for 12 to 18. Yanmar owners don't understand, or not Yanmar owners in general, but people just ask me this all the time. So it's one piece of information I just want to give everybody that's watching. Bio. On a Yanmar excavator, a bio is a zero tail swing. When I turn this excavator, it stays inside of the tracks. 
You can have a bio 25, bio 17, bio 55, uh, bio 80. You can have, there's lots of different models that are bios. Over here, if you follow me over here, and look at this one, this is an SV40. Yanmar makes two models, the SV40 and the SV100. They are minimal tail swing excavators. On the 40, you're getting six inches of overhang over the top. The counterweight will help you lift in the front, uh, give you a little bit more lift capacity when you're trying to dig or lift heavy, heavy objects. SV, minimal tail. Bio, zero tail. Just wanted to let y'all know. Thanks for watching.